Express, the mobile stretch clinic that takes yoga to the people. We have with us two very special guests. Once again, you're very familiar with them. To my right, Lucy Benjamin, and to my left, Judy Jacob. Judy and Lucy have been with us at least in 15 of the last 24 episodes. I think more than that. Today is episode number 25. My name is Banu Suresh. And I'm here to help, along with Judy and Lucy, to help you prevent common ailments with the help of a few very simple stretches. We did touch upon a few of the common ailments, their symptoms and causes, previously in previous episodes. Today, we are going to try and complete a full sequence. Each episode, starting today, over the next eight episodes, we are going to complete four sequences to pre help prevent arthritis, asthma, constipation, diabetes, hypertension, lumbago, piles, which is hemorrhoids, and sciatica. We will also include our breathing sequence. When we attempt the arthritis series, for example, arthritis sequence, we will also breathe, we will also involve uh, the breathing technique for uh, for arthritis, which would be Kapalbhati. Kapalbhati is simply forceful <coughs> exhale, and we do, we call them strokes. So you would exhale very forcefully about 20 to 30 times at the rate of three per second. And as you go, as you get more experience, you go faster and faster. But before that, let us try to understand or rather recap what exactly is arthritis? Arthritis is simply inflammation. We're talking of arthritis of the knees this time. Infl inflammation of weight-bearing joints, such as the knees in today's instance, but also ankles and spines sometimes. It is apparent in the form of infection, injury, or wear and tear. And some of the causes of arthritis include lack of circulation, and you'll get a lot of that. You'll get a lot of circulation when you join us uh, in our stretches. Calcium deficiency is another cause. Obesity is a third and increased stress levels, which can be controlled with meditation. Symptoms that make movement difficult when you have arthritis are cramps, pain, or stiffness in joints. So we're going to try and limber up our joints today, especially the knee joints. Uh, to help us prevent arthritis in the future and maybe relieve any arthritis you may already have. And what's happening is, what's happening to our body when we work out in these stretches, the joints are mobilized in the folding and unfolding of the knees and the lower extremities. There is a synovial fluid that is secreted when the joints are mobilized, and this fluid acts as a kind of a lubricant between the kneecap and the shin bone. So there is no chafing, there are no extra soft buildups in your knees, so there's less arthritic pain. This buffering action protects the bones from eroding, it makes them stronger, and encourages easier movement of the joints. Let's first go with the breath, the Kapalbhati breath. You will need a kind of a, a tissue or a face towel. Judy and Lucy, you have yours. Kapalbhati literally translates to shining skull, and when you actually do about 50 to 100 strokes each time, you will come out like you're floating on air. You will feel like you're floating on air, but today, we're just going to do about 10 to 15 strokes. We'll try to maintain a rhythm, maybe two per second, but we're not counting the seconds. We're gonna go with our body. We're sitting on our heels or cross-legged is fine. For me, I need to sit on my heels. I feel a little more comfortable. As long as your um, 
abdomen, your lower abdomen to your shoulder, your thoracic part is free enough to let the air circulate and move around, you're fine. Um, when you go through the strokes at, let's say, two per second or 30 a minute, it increases the bile, it activates liver function, and it eliminates toxins, especially because you're breathing, and uh, you're exhaling in Kapalbhati, and it soothes and relaxes the skeletal system, which is why you get the heady feeling at the end of it. So let's do that. You've got your hands on your knees, you're sitting cross-legged, so you would have your hands, uh, the forefinger and the thumb touch, and place your hands with your palms open. I'm sitting on my heels, so I'm gonna keep my palms closed. And this, keeping the finger and the thumb, forefinger and thumb together, simply helps close in the circuit. You are actually forming a little electrical circuit within your body. You're keeping your energy within your body. Tissues ready? Hand towels ready if you need to clear your nose? Okay. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, inhale, and exhale forcefully with me. Let's slow down right there. I want you to feel it, and we will do this one more time, just so you get a sense of what Kapalbhati really means and how it feels. What we are doing is, by sending out the air forcefully, we're trying to detox our body. Now, we want to make sure, we also want to make sure that in doing this, we do not lose track of the rhythm. You want to keep a rhythm of, if you need to go a little slower than that, that's fine too, but you want to keep the pace. Let's do about, we did about 16 strokes previously. Let's do another 16 just so we can enjoy that experience. Close your eyes, inhale deeply. open your eyes. What's happening in this breath is you're clearing your head, you're clearing your body of toxins, you're activating your liver, you're increasing bile production. Basically, you're making your whole body flow, or your blood circulates beautifully. And you will have a kind of a heady feeling in the beginning. As you get more experienced, your speed, the speed of your strokes get faster and faster. You could go at four seconds a minute, uh, four, second, uh, four strokes a second if you like. But right now we're doing two strokes a second. All right, we're gonna go into the arthritis series. Now before you practice this sequence every time on a daily basis, you might wanna try your breathing, the Kapalbhati breath, before you stretch. So now we're gonna get the blood flowing in our toes before we try and stand up. We're gonna go with the arthritis series. You wanna just do a few motions with your ankles, I sat on my heels, so my ankles are a little bit frozen. I'm going to release the tension in my ankles. Judy and Lucy sat, sat cross-legged, so they might want to make sure that their knees don't feel too much pressure. You might want to move your knees just a little bit. Regardless of how you sit, just make sure you loosen up your body. And then when we are ready, we're going to stand up. Okay, are we ready? Lucy? Lucy, Judy. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the audience, if our viewers are ready to join us, before we do that, in case we run out of time, if you would like a copy of this book, Yoga Secrets, email me or visit the website, www.yogaexpress.com. And if you'd like to join us in any of these stretches, feel free, just email us again or come to the website, and I will reply immediately. Send us a, sa a stamp self-address envelope if you can, if you want a postcard and a copy of the book. Okay. Now this time, we're not going to go through the entire series, the 48 plus sequence. We're gonna selectively pick postures that impact our knees. So we'll start with the first one. It's called Thunderbolt, Utkadasa. Heels together, toes slightly apart, hands by your side. Now you have your chest out, chin up. Close your eyes to enjoy the experience. There is no balanced posture. When there is a balanced posture, I will advise you beforehand and you can open your eyes then. Inhale. 
Now, as you exhale, you raise your arms a little over shoulder height and bend at the knees. Try to make an L with your upper thighs and the floor, so you, or a number seven, whichever way you look at it. You have exhale, inhale, come up. Let's try that one more time, and we're going to go into the next posture. Inhale deeply, and as we exhale, we'll go down. Hold. Now remember, when I say hold, it means hold your posture, not your breath. Keep your back straight, tighten your anal sphincters. Keep your knees as close as you can. Inhale, come up. Release your arms to the side. Turn, let's all turn to one side. Let's turn to our left. We're gonna bring this here. Keep your feet about, keep your legs about three feet apart. Turn your right foot out, your left foot, the toes are slightly in. Now your arms are by your side. What we're gonna do is as we bend our right knee, now this posture is called Virabhadra, brave warrior. As we bend our right knee, our arms will go up and we are inhaling as we go up. So let's inhale. I'm sorry, exhale, sorry, exhale. Now hold, turn to look to the right. Inhale, come up, release your arms. Now take, put the brakes on on the right foot, turn your right foot in, turn your left foot out, look to the left. Exhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height and bend your left knee. Inhale, come up, release your knees. Release your arms by your side. Turn your left foot in. This time, turn your right foot out one more time. We're going to go into Virabhadra, and then we're going to take it at a deeper angle. It's called Virabhadra Kona. You might notice that in all of these postures, we're trying our best to mobilize our knees. Okay, so right foot turns out. Left toes turn just a little bit. And actually, this time, let's go this way. Let's turn around this way. So Judy, you can also... Look at us. So this time we're going to do the right foot. For, um, yes. It's again right foot. So right foot goes out. Left foot turns just a little bit in. As we bend our knee, right knee, we're going to exhale and raise our arms up to shoulder height. So inhale first. Exhale. Just like in Virabhadra. This time we're going to inhale naturally and then exhale as we dip our right hand in front of our right knee. Left arm goes straight up. And take your left arm over your head. Keep your palms facing forward. That's it, very nice. Hold. If you do fall out, come right back in. We're all in this together. Inhale, come up. Inhale, raise your arms, turn your right foot in and your left foot out. Exhale, the inhale happens, remember that. Keep your palms facing down. Now exhale, bend your left knee. Look to your left, exhale, keep exhaling, dip your left hand in front of your left knee. Bring your right arm all the way over and then if your palms are facing forward, Take your right arm over your head as much as you can. Very nice, let's hold. Inhale, come up. Let's release the left knee and the right arm. Release both the arms down. Let's turn to face the viewers. We have a balanced posture. This time, if you have been closing your eyes before, this time, keep your eyes open. It is a balanced posture, you're gonna need to focus. If you want to close your eyes, in your mind's eye, you have to think of someone who makes you feel steady or something that makes you feel steady. If not, let's keep our eyes open. Transfer your weight to the right leg. Raise your left foot. Lift your left foot, hold it with your left hand at the ankle and press the left heel into your right groin. We're going to reach our son. Would you like me to stagger? Come forward, I'm, I'm gonna go in the back. gonna hold this posture for a few seconds. And
remember, it's not important to raise your heel all the way to your inner thigh, to your right inner thigh. It's more important to just hold it there. So you don't have to be all the way to the thigh. You could do what Lucy is doing beautifully. She is right just at her curves. Excuse me. And Judy has gone up. So we can all be at different places on different days. So release, exhale and release very gently. On the other side, we're going to raise our arms as well. I forgot my mistake. OK. Transfer your weight to the left leg. Raise your right heel. Inhale. Hold your right ankle with your right hand and tuck your right heel into your left groin, into your left inner thigh. Make sure your right knee goes out to the side. Now, if you feel ready, you can either place your hands on your hips or you can bring both your palms together in front of you. Look at a point in front that does not move. And if you're ready, let's take our arms overhead. Very nice, darlings, Lucy, beautiful. Judy, great. Let's hold. And if you're ready, and I'm not sure I am ready today, we're going to try and close our eyes. OK, just a split second. That will do for me today. <laughs> Exhale, release. Hold your right ankle with your right hand and release. <laughs> Typically, in the full sequence, we would have transitioned into the Natraj posture. Today, we're doing arthritis-specific postures. So let's did we do both sides? We did, didn't we? We did. OK, good. <laughs> I have, I remember Amy used to yeah. tap her sides. OK, transfer the weight to your right leg. This time, we're going to grab the left ankle from behind, Natraja posture. That's the dancer's pose. Take your left ankle in your left hand from behind. And you need to balance yourself. So when you're ready, when you've got hold of your ankle, we're going to try and raise the right hand. Take your time. We'll do it together. Raise the right hand. This is mostly for balance. If you want, you can make the connection, your forefinger and thumb together. You don't have to. It doesn't mean anything specific in our sequence. This time, we're going to try and dip our torso forward and lift our left knee higher. So that way, we're trying to come down in a T. Keep exhaling. Now, if you want, you can try and go down as much as you want, but keep your eyes open. Balance postures require us to keep our eyes open. Inhale, come up. Release your left leg. Nice. Nice. This time, you, no, this, I'm sure the other side will be stronger. You never know. No, well, some days are better. I've seen you come in really beautiful balance postures before too, so I think we're doing great. Okay, this time, let's transfer the weight onto the left leg. Take our right ankle in our right hand from behind. And I'm going to go back just a little bit. Sorry about that, Judy. OK. Now let me see. See, my balance on this side is not great today. So now raise your left arm over if you want to make the connection, forefinger and thumb together. Now this time, I'm going to exhale and lift my right knee a little higher and see if I can dip a little more, dip my torso. Sometimes I'm able to come all the way down. Sometimes I'm not. Inhale, come up. Release. Let's try the next one. This one, I know Lucy is going to just crunch herself up. Let's go. This is called Garudas. And do you have your sequence in front of you? Is that why? We pr I probably should have warned you. Yes. Let's keep the card in front so you're watching. We're doing posture number mm -hmm. the sixth one now. So transfer the weight to your left leg. We're going to take the right thigh over the left thigh and try and wrap our right foot over the ankle. Now, once you've got it wrapped or close enough, now because your right leg is over and your left, yeah, left leg is under, this time your left arm is going to come over your right arm. So that's the full Garuda posture. Garuda is eagle. Nice. How much comes? This one needs a lot of concentration too. Okay, let's hold. Inhale, come up, release the legs, and then the arms. 
I've always wondered why my teachers used to say, release the legs first in balanced posture. That's because we don't want to fall out of it. We want to get out gracefully. Sometimes the arms get a little tangled up, so it's important. OK, we're now on yes. some seated posture. Yes, yes thank you. <laughs> That's right. OK, let's, tra let's transfer the weight to the right leg. Thank you, Judy. Now, we'll take our left thigh, cross it over the right. Again, it's not vital to get your ankles, your left ankle over your right calf. It's more important to just bend your knee, bend and unbend. So let's bend a little bit. Okay, now the right arm, raise your right arm, goes over the left arm, twine it around, hold it in front of you. Just visualize this as the beak of a bird. Inhale, let's come up, release, legs and then the arms. Okay. Typically, I always advise participants in our workshop to try the more difficult side first. But when you're practicing on your own, it's easy to do that. When we're practicing as a group, each person has a different difficult side. So for the sake of coordination, we'll go with the same mm -hmm. side altogether. OK, we're going to do the next posture. The previous one was called Garuda or Eagle. The next one is called Ashwa Sanchala. What you do is place your right foot a little forward. Left foot is back about a foot and a half. Bend, you're going to come down. As you come down, just like you would do like a runner, place both your palms down and then take your left leg all the way back. Wiggle your right foot forward. Bring your chest out. Inhale. Exhale. Good. This time we're going to do a very smooth transfer if it's possible. Just bring the left foot forward and take the right leg back. You're, if at times you feel you need to hold this posture for a little longer time to feel the impact, you can place your knees down. Let's now put our knee, right knee down. We're going to transition straight away into the next posture. Now, this one is called Ashwa Santala Equestrian. Now, put your right knee on the floor, uncurl your toes, raise your torso, inhale. Take your right elbow. As you exhale, place your right elbow over your left knee. Push your left knee with your left hand. Then take your left palm, place it on your right palm, and look up to the left. Take your time. Inhale and release the posture. Now without making too much movement, we're going to take the left leg back and bring the right leg forward. We're trying to transition so that once you get used to the sequence, you will be able to flow through it very quickly. Wiggle your right foot forward so your knee is fairly straight to the floor. You don't want to knee too, too far ahead of your toes. Inhale, bring your body up. Make sure your pelvis is nicely dipped so you dip your hip. I like to say that. Inhale, raise your left arm. Exhale, bring your left elbow over your right knee. Push your right knee with your left elbow, with your right hand. And then place your right palm over your left palm and look up to your right. Hold and release. Inhale, come out of the posture, release. This time we are going to come on our knees very gently. Yes, help your foot back. We're going to sit on our heels. And keep inhaling, go right back. Make sure you place your elbow behind you. Don't go all the way back. Your head comes down last. Place your elbow, make sure you're safe. Actually, do you want you have enough space, Lucy? Mm -hmm. OK. Let's come down on our elbows. If you don't want to come down to your elbows today, that's fine. Hold. This is Sukta Vajra. Sukta Vajra is supine diamond. Inhale, come up. Make sure you use your palms to push from behind you. Inhale, bring your arms up, overhead. Exhale, come all the way forward. This posture is called Shashankasana. Shashank is rabbit of air. Inhale, come up. This time we're going to go smoothly transition into Ardha Matsendra. Half Lord of the Fishes. Fold your left knee, place it under the right butt. Thank you for joining us, Any. All right. Take your right leg over the left knee. 
Make sure your right foot is flat on the ground. Push your right knee in. Torque your body to the right. Inhale, raise your left arm. Keep exhaling. Take your left elbow over your right knee. And if you need to touch your left knee, it's a little difficult for you. It is a little bit tight for me today. Let me try. Place your right palm behind you and look to the right, Lucy. That's it. Great. Inhale. Release the left arm. Raise your left arm. Release. And let's switch over to the other leg before Judy corrects me. <laughs> that reminds me for the other side. Place your left heel under your right heel under your left butt. Left foot. Let's move this over your right knee. Your left foot is flat on the ground. Push your left knee in and torque your body to the left. Inhale, raise your right arm. Exhale. Bring your right elbow over your left knee and try to grab your right knee or your right foot. And then keep exhaling and turn as far back as you can. Of course, when you exhale, remember, you will need to inhale, but that happens. Inhale, raise your right arm. Release, release both your legs. Actually, release just the left leg. Let's go directly into the next one. Release, extend the left leg out. Bring the right knee in, bring the right foot in. Your knees are raised. Inhale, raise your right arm. Exhale, and lean your torso forward. Twine your right arm around your right knee and hold it there behind your right thigh. Then take your left arm from behind. Try to grab your right hand. And once you're done, once you've made the connection, if you don't touch, if your hands don't touch, grab hold of your trousers, your pants. Make the connection. Inhale, bring your body up. Release, exhale. Let's release, let's go. Right into the next one, extend your right leg out. Your left leg comes in. Remember, these are all knee benders. So you wanna make sure that you get as many of these in as possible. Your left foot is close to your right inner right thigh. Inhale, raise your left arm. Turn your body a little bit, to the upper body a little to your right. Exhale, come forward. Twine your left arm around your left knee and just tuck in with your fingers, if you don't see it on camera. Tuck in with your fingers and take your right hand behind you, grab your left hand. We have about a minute to go. You think we're okay to go a little smoother? Let's go a little faster. Let's see how much we can get in. Release. Okay, let's get our right, tuck our right foot under and our left leg Right foot is under the right thigh, left leg goes over the right knee. Make sure both your feet are facing, both your heels are facing back. Inhale, raise your left arm. Remember, right knee over, left arm goes over. Exhale, bring your left arm behind you and grab your left hand from behind with the right hand. Hold it, then bring your chin up. Inhale, release. Let's go straight into the other side. Let's see how many we can get. And now this is becoming a challenge. We will move a little faster next time, but that's okay. Left foot, right foot under the left thigh. Left leg comes over the right knee. Both your feet face behind. Inhale, raise your right arm. Exhale, release your right arm behind you and grab your right hand with your left hand. straight from here into pigeon posture. What you just saw was Gomuk. Gomuk is cow face. The pigeon 